Hello everyone, so welcome to a screencast about creating a blog in Django. My name is Arun Ravindran and my website is arunrocks.com. So uh, in the next couple of minutes, uh, I'm going to take you through creating a blog in Django. The reason I created the screencast is because most of the screencasts about Django were created before Django 1.0 version and now we have 1.3 and there have been a lot of changes which I hope to cover in the screencast. So in the next couple of minutes, we actually create uh, a couple of uh, uh, pages for the blog uh, and we also create an archives page we also create some tags pages we also create the RSS feed so let's get started right away let's use the command Django admin and use the command start project we'll use the name my site let's go to my site so here as you can see there's a simple project structure created by Django now I'm going to use manage by a lot so I'm just going to make it executable and I'm going to actually run the server to see what Django has created in its default state so if you visit the page well so you can see that it shows an it worked page so that's exciting but we haven't created the key functionality yet so let's try to enable uh, a functionality called uh, admin pages within Django go to settings and uh, let's mention what database we are going to use SQLite basically uh, and what file name the database is going to be stored at so my site dot DB and uh, let's go all the way down uncomment the Django admin application we'll delete the remaining uh, I don't think we need to change anything more in settings let's ignore the other settings let's go directly instead to urls.py and uncomment a couple of lines so here basically uh, we have the admin related line right here we are uncommenting that we also have two lines up here which are probably new to some of you and we are done so if we go back to uh, running the server again of course we forgot to create the necessary tables for uh, the admin application to work let's do that by running sync DB so it's asking me if I needed to create a super user yes I like to call it admin admin at example.com the password is the same as admin admin again wow so it's done so let's run the server now so uh, if I run the server I should be able to see an error message which says that I'm not using the admin URL let's use the admin URL wow so now we have a login page and we actually have an admin website which has a lot of functionality already built in thanks to Django but uh, we haven't done anything yet about our blog so let's do that let's stop the server and create an application start app called blog so this time you can actually see that there is a subdirectory called blog created it has all the blog required files so first we are going to edit models.py which is basically where our logic or where the data of uh, the blog resides let's go to uh, blog models and here we are actually going to create our first model our only model which is basically post we're going to derive it from model uh, let's add a title attribute it should be models dot text field uh, sorry this can be actually a care field with a maximum length of 100 characters the body which is actually the blog post could be a text field and we need a date of creation so created could be models dot date time field and uh, 
we actually need a string representation for each uh, model uh, which is called Unicode um, and we simply return title self dot title so uh, one more uh, attribute I'd like to add is tags so here uh, we are going to use for this screencast a uh, third-party application called tag it which is basically a great way to add tags to any kind of model in this particular case uh, we're going to use it for a blog uh, the easy way to install it is to use is to type uh, pip install tag it uh, if you haven't installed it yet I have so all you have to do is one, after installation use uh, a taggable manager class from tag it tag it dot managers import taggable manager and add an instance of taggable manager to your class to your model so once you're done that you're basically having a full-fledged tags uh, attribute within your post uh, now uh, this would not appear on your admin interface automatically for that to happen you had to create a file called admin.py inside your application it's basically a three-line uh, file all you have to write is uh, a couple of import statements import admin and you have to import the model now called post and you have to register this model with your admin site admin site register post that's it so uh, this takes care of your admin.py it also takes care of your models now the next thing you have to do is include these uh, new applications in your settings.py so let's do that uh, the installed applications is a tuple you add tag it first and then you add blog in the same order in the correct order and of course you had to run sync DB so that the tables are created for these apps let's try to run the server now now if it all went well should see yes you should see the posts you should also see tag it creating the tags and you can go directly if you're a content uh, content author you can actually directly create your post so you can write uh, lorem ipsum la some dummy text over here for the time being and you can write uh, the paragraph or so today's date today's time some sample tags a a b b c c so once you save it you can actually see that it's perfectly saved you can add, uh, I'm planning to add two more test two uh, lorem epsom text today's date today's time a a tag one more test three couple of random text today's date today's time bb saved so we have three posts and uh, we should be good to go so now next what you're going to do is we are actually going to add uh, the template for displaying this particular page uh, the first thing we have to do for that is to actually create a uh, uh, URL spy uh, modification. So let's go to URLs. So what we're going to do is that we're going to uh, hand over the URL handling to the blog application. So let's say anything that goes inside blog should go into blogs blog.urls. Now inside, uh, let's select this inside blog let's create a similar file called urls.py 
Now this file is basically a copy. Of course we don't need the admin related stuff here. Um, it's a copy and uh, we actually are going to create the default index page here. So before that uh, we're going to use something called generic views. So generic views are actually a shortcut for not creating views uh, when uh, the application is uh, using a fairly straightforward kind of view. So Django comes with a couple of built-in views and in Django 1.2 or 1.3, uh, I don't remember which, they actually introduce class-based views. So we're going to use uh, the class-based views in this particular case to create our index. Uh, so we're going to use something called D list view. So let's import that from Django.views dot generic for generic views uh, let's import list view so uh, we're going to use list view here uh, we are actually going to call a function called as view which is basically a function which is uh, invoking uh, the generic uh, view in this particular case, we have some named parameters that are required uh, for creating a view. So uh, one of the first named parameters, uh, important ones, are uh, query set. So uh, we actually have to invoke the model here. So let's import that from blog.models, import post. And uh, we're actually going to use the most recent uh, post so let's use post dot object dot all objects dot all uh, in reverse chronological order. So let's order them. Use order by negative created, and let's see only the last two uh, blog entries by using this particular notation and. Uh, one more named parameter is required which is the template name and uh, let's call it blog.html for the time being. So uh, this actually creates a generic view for the default page and what is remaining is actually actually creating this blog uh, template called blog.html this page template to be precise. So let's do that. Uh, we'll create a folder called templates and we'll create something called uh, blog.html so uh, generally html uh, blog templates uh, sorry generally templates are actually uh, based out of something called a base.html which is the base for your entire website let's do that uh, I know we haven't created this file yet, but we will solve that in a moment. Block content. And let's end the block. So let's use the same kind of content for base.html. Uh, we'll just add a heading over here just to show that we are using something common across the pages my site blog that'll do and uh, now begins the task of actually creating uh, the template so as you know that we are passing a lot of uh, recent uh, blog posts so we need a for loop to iterate through all the posts so let's do that for post n now uh, in this particular example, uh, we are actually uh, using a generic view and our list view is actually passing an object called objects underscore list uh, which contains the list of all objects. So let's iterate through that list of objects in the for loop and uh, now we are ready to actually create uh, the appearance or the tags required for displaying a, a single post. So let's do that. 
host dot title okay uh, now we come to the created date use it let's use a div for that post underscore meta and here we say on post dot created just created on that particular date now we'll need a div for the body let's call it post underscore body and uh, we actually can stop by saying post dot body but I'm going to use some HTML uh, and I want it to be appearing directly so I use the save filter so that it does not automatically escape it and I also need one more filter so that the line breaks get converted into actual HTML uh, paragraph breaks uh, which I find very convenient now the last thing to add is tags so let's add tags tags uh, we need to iterate through all the tags within a post which actually appears uh, as a list so let's write a for loop for that for tag in post dot tags uh, it's actually in all under tags in the for loop now uh, we actually find uh, it convenient to use a link so the way I like to use the tag page or refer to the tag page is something like this blog tag followed by tag and uh, inside I'd like to use of course tag uh, if you want to separate it by commas you'll find that uh, a comma at the end of the last item to be a bit annoying so you can use an if condition over there if it's not the for loop last uh, item basically the last item with for loop you can actually use a comma and you can end that if statement over there so I think that should be it uh, we should not uh, spend more time on the template and uh, yes let's go back and see if uh, there's actually something appearing when we type blog yes so as you can see it worked uh, we have a heading a date and a body and the tags and of course the first post is not visible because we are just showing the first two uh, the most recent two uh, let's uh, also have a page for each specific post uh, when we click on the title of the post so let's solve that uh, quickly by adding a link at the title itself so uh, the way I'd like to design the URL is something like this blog followed by the post dot ID and uh, let's close that so it looks something like this so if you click on this you should actually be taken to that particular uh, blog entry so for that again we are going to use generic views we'll go back to URLs uh, of the particular blog and here we actually use something called another generic view called detail view so detail view should appear when actually the blog is being clicked at so for this I think we missed that so for this uh, we actually need to use a pattern which is similar to uh, passing a primary key now in this case uh, we need to use a named regular expression uh, what I actually intend to uh, do is something like this a sequence of digits uh, but we need to name it so we use P and call it PK so PK is a naming convention for detail view and uh, we don't use query set for detail view we actually use models 
so we call it model equals post and we change the name of the template to post so here we can actually go to blog uh, template and reuse most of it call it post and all we had to do is remove the for loop so that's done so hopefully uh, if you go back to the post and click you should be able to see a single page now uh, in this uh, blog we are not actually going to add any comments because uh, most blogs today use discuss or intense debate for comments and it's basically a matter of changing the template to incorporate that so uh, we're going to skip comments here uh, let's quickly go and create an archives page so going back to URLs uh, of course we're going to use generic views again uh, as you must have as you must have already guessed and call it archives uh, we just remove this limitation of two we just need to see all the pages or all the posts and uh, we're going to change the name of the archive of the template to archive.html uh, archives rather so uh, let's use uh, blog.html for our template and uh, let's save this as archives.html uh, the only change uh, we'd like to make is uh, the way in which uh, the template displays uh, each individual post so basically what we're going to do is uh, instead of headings we're going to call it paragraphs and uh, instead of uh, using uh, just the name of or the title you're going to add the created by date as well so that you can actually see uh, the dates in an archive so uh, I'd like to filter uh, this with a shorter name uh, so I'm going to use date year month date so hopefully that should look more compact and uh, easy to read uh, let's see if it worked archives yep it worked as you can see test post 1 is now visible our first test post uh, can be seen and uh, as you can see uh, the tag which appears at the end of each post is still not working so let's fix that uh, we have done half of the work for tags already uh, let's go to URLs uh, we have unfortunately uh, we cannot use uh, a generic view so uh, we had to use a proper view so let's make sure that blog dot views uh, which is actually uh, common for all the views which are not generic it's mentioned here and uh, let's go and add a URL for that uh, as you must have noted it starts with a tag and it's followed by a couple of uh, non white space characters and uh, we have to call you have to name it uh, we'll call it tag and let's use a view name in this case let's call it tag page Um, I think that's it and let's go to the views.py for the blog application uh, it's empty for the time being uh, okay. so let's import uh, the model of the blog which is post let's also import a shortcut function from Django shortcuts called render to response this is almost always used in a view and let's finally define our view which is called tag page it by default gets a request argument we have also passed an additional argument called tag uh, so both these arguments would be there uh, next we need to pull a query set uh, so basically we need to see all the uh, objects which are having the name of that particular tag so post dot objects 
dot filter would be a good uh, way of querying that uh, tags dot uh, actually this is the right way to call it and uh, let's return rendered response the template name could be tag page dot html we also return a dictionary object containing posts and uh, tag would be also helpful for the template I think uh, yeah we should call it post rather than post so uh, I think we're done here uh, all we need to do is create a template uh, page called tag page uh, we'll base archives for this and uh, we'll save it as tag page.html and uh, actually the only difference here is we'll add a heading called uh, posts tagged for that particular tag name which is now in tag and instead of object list we are actually passing posts as a query set other than that uh, I don't see much of a difference uh, we need here uh, it's basically the same as archives pages so let's see if it worked so you go to post click on the tag name yep it worked so basically you have a post which has multiple tags and each tag has a particular page now all that remains is adding a feed which most blogs have so let's uh, go back to URLs now uh, adding a feed is pretty uh, easy uh, if you can remember uh, where to import it from which is a pretty long winded name so it's from Django dot uh, contrib dot syndication dot views import feed feed would be our base class and we'd have to derive application specific class in this case we'll call it blog feed and uh, we need to give certain uh, uh, instance variables or certain uh, class variables like title uh, could be my site description could be some ramblings of mine and link which would be located at blog slash feed and uh, we also tell we also tell how to get the items uh, for an RSS feed uh, which is basically the same uh, query which we have used here just return that and uh, we also need to follow the same sequence of uh, title description and link for each item so we call it define item title and uh, we return the items title which is our post title similarly for uh, the description so we return the body of the uh, of the post and yeah I think we are missing to add item in each case and uh, finally the items link just self item uh, we basically use an interpolation uh, here which is basically blog slash uh, the post ID as an integer I think that's it. Um, do we miss item? Yes. And we can basically add another URL. It says feed. And just instantiate blog feed, which is our derived feed. So let's check if that worked.
So it says view does not exist and it has no attribute blog feed. Um, yeah, we should not have used the codes. Yep, that worked. So uh, thanks a lot for watching this screencast. Uh, we have actually covered a lot of uh, functionality here in terms of having a blog, in terms of adding tags to it, in terms of having a RSS feed. I hope you enjoyed this. Please let me know your comments. Thank you.